let's create some cool things by stacking some strokes inside of Illustrator. Specifically, let's create the look for this road just here and for this railway track just here. Now before we do that, there's one important thing that I would like to show you. Let me just unlock my railways layer just here and I'll select that railway path just there. I'd like to point out the appearance panel and the properties panel. So as awesome as the properties panel is, it is restricted in that it can only show us a single stroke. That's what this little exclamation mark and this information box is just here. It's telling us that the thing that we have selected, it has multiple strokes applied to it, but we can only see the topmost stroke in this situation just here. If we wish to see all of those strokes and edit those, we need to do so from the appearance panel. So this is where we will spend most of our time in this video just now. Okay, very cool. So let's dive into our start document and create those two looks from scratch. So let's, uh, let's start with the road actually. So there we go. I'm just going to select this path, this path just here, and let's turn this into a road. So from within the appearance panel, we are seeing the single stroke and the single fill that are on this document, excuse me, that are on this path by default. So let's first uh, edit this stroke. A couple of things we can do. Uh, there is a strokes panel, which is this guy just here. But I wanted to point out, you don't have to dive back and forth between all of these panels, because if you just click on the word stroke from within the appearance panel, you can access all of those stroke, uh, stroke values. If you wish to adjust the size, you can click in here. You can use the up and down arrow keys. You can use these arrows just here, or you can hit this drop down just here and choose any number you like. If you wish to change the color, you can click on this drop down to view all of the swatches just there or you can click on the swatch itself just there. If you hold down the shift key, you can actually bring up not the swatches, but the actual sliders, in this case, the RGB sliders, and uh, mix up your own color like so. So let's, uh, let's get some numbers in here for our first stroke. And we want the first stroke to be uh, 20 point in size. So there we go, there's our nice thick black line. We want to add a second stroke. The way we do that is from the bottom left corner in the appearance panel, if I hover over this, there it is, add new stroke. Just so you know, there is an add new fill button just to the right of that, which we won't be using in this lesson. So let's click on add new stroke. A new stroke is created, the exact same values of the stroke that was in there a moment ago. So it's just basically given us a new stroke with the attributes of the one before it. So let's change this to be a 18 point stroke and let's change the color to a deep gray. Something like this looks good. Fantastic. So you can see out here inside of my artwork, we have a black line with a slightly thinner gray line on top of it, giving us the appearance of a black border on the outside. Let's add one more stroke. Let's make this one yellow and three point in size, which is giving us a nice line down the middle. Let's turn this into a dashed line. So let's open up those stroke options, turn on dashed line. And in this case, let's make this a 12 point dash, which is what's popped up in here. Fantastic. Just so you know, guys, we could also play with these cap options as well. Fantastic. That's giving us a nice look for those lines as well. In this case, let's just turn that off. And also, just so you know, if you ever have problems with the way your lines terminate, your dash lines terminate that is, you do have two buttons in here. One is uh, preserving the exact appearance of the dash line. The other is you giving Illustrator permission to slightly adjust those numbers to make the dash line terminate at its ends in a much more prettier fashion for want of a better term. So again, if you're having problems with the way your dash line is terminating guys, try these two buttons just in here. Fantastic, so there's our road. That's looking pretty good. Let's go and create our railway track. So I will unlock my railways layer and select that line just in there like so. Excellent, got the right line. So let's add some strokes. We can do this one a little bit more quickly. So our first stroke, we want that to be a 17 point. Let's add a second stroke. I want this to be white. There we go. And I want this to be 12 point. Now, 
If we were against a white background, this would look pretty good. This would look like we've managed to get our two rails in place. However, we are against a gray background and we do have uh, graphics below that as well. So this is pointing out a bit of an issue, but what's great is we will be able to fix this in just a moment. We are going to actually make this white line a transparent line, but we'll see that in just a minute or two. Let's add a third line, a third stroke. Let's make this black. Let's make this 24 point in width. Let's open up the stroke options. Let's make this a dashed line. And let's maybe make this say five points thick with a gap of say six points. Okay, this is looking pretty good. And again, guys, if we were against a white background, we'd be pretty much done at this stage. But let me show you how we can actually make this white line transparent now. So it's a two-step process. The thing that we want to make transparent, we need to actually set its opacity to zero. So what I did just there was I hit the little twirl down triangle next to the stroke uh, option for the white stroke. So if I twirl that down, here's opacity. If I click on that, I'm going to set that to zero. Okay, so, excuse me, I made a mistake there. I did not have the line selected. So let me do that again. I'll select the line up under stroke for white, set the opacity to zero. Fantastic. Okay, so no big surprises there. Our white stroke disappeared, but here's where the magic comes just now. We are going to go after the opacity settings for the entire stroke. So we have the entire stroke selected. This bottommost option just here, opacity, this is for the path as a whole, not an individual stroke. So if I click on opacity just here, the bottom option just down here, knockout group, I need to click on this not once, but twice. As soon as there is a tick mark inside of there, any strokes up here which have an opacity of zero are rendered transparent. So this has given us the look we want, which is fantastic. So you can see, not only can we see the background, but we can also see the different items beneath that as well. Uh, this also points out an important thing, which is the order of our strokes. So the way in which we have these stacked, we know that this top stroke is creating these cross beams running across just here. So if I turn that off and on, but if I was to drag this to the very bottom, for example, it actually gets cut out because this guy here is now sitting below this white line, which we know is now cutting out not just itself, but everything that sits below it. So I'm going to drag that dashed line back to the top and everything is back where we want it. Fantastic. Okay, so we've created the two looks that we like. There's another cool uh, couple of things that I'd like to show you. One is uh, graphic styles. So I have a graphic styles panel just here. You can see I've already created a few ahead of time for some of the other items on our page just here. So if I wish to create a graphic style for my road, I'm going to select that and I can do this one of two ways. I can grab it and just drag it straight into the graphic styles panel. You can see it's appeared just up there. Let me undo that with a command or control Z. The other option is from within the appearance panel itself. You can just grab that little square just up there and you can drag that in and you can see it popping up there like so. If I double click on this, I can give it a name. I'll just call it road, choose okay. So I now have a graphic style which captures all of those elements inside of here. So let me demo that for you. If I select, say, this path just here and click on the graphic style for my road, fantastic, there we go. And if I say click on this guy just here, and if I click on that, there we go, fantastic, it's applied that. But we do have a problem just down there. I'm going to explain how we can fix that in just a moment. But before we do that, let's just quickly create a graphic style for my railway track. So if I grab that, and from the appearance panel, I will just drag that in there like so. Remember to double click, and we can just call that railway. Fantastic, so having done that, let's now come back and revisit that little problem I just pointed out there with our roads just there. So let me just lock our railways. So if I do a command or control A to select everything, that is just selecting everything that I want to be a road. So having selected everything, I could actually just now apply the road graphic style it applies the road graphic style to everything. Everything looks great, but again, we still have that problem just in there. So how can we potentially fix that? Well, let me actually click on the default graphic style. So I'm basically just setting this back to nothing. And actually I will just set the fill on this to none. 
So if I click away, you can see we've just got our simple default black line. Uh, the simple trick, guys, is just select everything and actually just group it. So having selected everything, you can just press Command or Control G to turn it into a group, and then simply apply the graphic style to that group. So if I click on that just now, you can see all those lines have had the road graphic style applied to them. And if I zoom in on our problematic corner just here, there it is, it looks fantastic. So the trick there, guys, just group everything together and then apply the graphic style to the group. Okay, that's it. Um, hope you got some uh, cool ideas there about some of the things that you could potentially build by stacking strokes inside of Illustrator.